1996, between the release of Kirby's Dream Land 2 and the next game in the series, the world got a tiny taste of Kirby for the Super NES, which was sort of a revisit to games like Avalanche or even Dream Course, if you're into that sort of thing. It was called Kirby no Omashabako, or Kirby's Toy Box, a collection of several mini-games, each in the vein of the previous SNES titles. If you haven't heard of it, don't worry. Most casual Kirby fans have it. Kirby's Toy Box was only released on the Satellaview, an add-on for the Super Famicom that allowed you to connect to a satellite system and download mini-games to play on your console. If you're familiar at all with the Sega channel, you should be able to understand the concept. It may not seem like much nowadays when you can download games in minutes from services like Steam or Xbox Live, but this was in the days before broadband internet, so it was done through the same system that brought cable TV into your home. Of course, this was made even more obscure by the fact that the Satellaview was only available in Japan. Even if you could have imported one from overseas, I don't think you would have been able to access the game since the St. Giga satellite service was limited to Japan. In addition to that, Kirby's Toy Box was a game that functioned on a strict schedule. Depending on when you connected to the network, different games would be available. Every time you played, there was a chance it would be something new, so you never really knew what you would be getting. Due to the ephemeral nature of these games, the limited geographical availability, and the fact that they were never released in actual cartridge format, finding and playing them today is almost impossible. And only a complete Kirby psychopath would take the time to scour the internet searching for them. So here's what I found. There were 10 games released as part of Kirby's Toy Box, most of which capitalize on the Kirby is a Ball concept of previous non-platform games. Kirby no Omashabako Baseball plays like one of those baseball gumball arcade games you sometimes see alongside claw machines and strip balls. You move the bat around the batter's box of the D-pad and swing by pressing one of the face buttons. And that's about it. When you hit Kirby, he'll either land in one of the holes or miss and fall down the bottom of the field, resulting in a strike. Three strikes and you're out. If you land in one of the holes, you'll either advance each Kirby that number of bases up to a home run, or score an out. Three outs and the game is over. I could see this being really addictive and fun, except for one problem. The lag. There is a horrible latency between when you press the swing button and when the bat actually responds, forcing you to swing before the ball is thrown, and unfortunately, I think that was deliberate. I guess the rising sound of the pitch winding up is supposed to be your indicator, but it's not easy to judge, since there doesn't seem to be any consistent timing involved with it. Now, maybe you were thinking the lag is just part of the system itself, and that all Kirby's Toy Box games are like this. Well, they're not. Other games I was able to play work just fine, like Pinball. If you played Kirby's Pinball Land, this should be pretty easy to understand. Except now, it's just one board. It's a nicely populated board, with lots of gadgets around the field to interact with, but except for the fact that it's in color, compared to the Game Boy version, it's pretty underwhelming. The only other game I was able to track down was Stardust, which at first glance looks like a breakout clone. Yeah, because the last one worked out so well. But it actually feels a lot different. It feels like the game has gravity physics, causing Kirby to have a more parabolic trajectory than an angular one. It's pretty cool, but it gets repetitive fast. There were a bunch of other games that I was unable to play that seemed like they would be really interesting. Guru Guru Ball, Balls Round and Round, looks like a strange combination of Ski Ball and Pachinko where you have to adjust your power to score the most points. Arrangi Buru, Arranging Balls, which is like Pachinko meets Tic-Tac-Toe, and of course, just regular Pachinko. The Japanese sure love their Pachinko. There's also a Ball Rally where you have to direct rolling Kirby's to the exit by opening and closing platforms, kind of like Canvas Curse meets Lemmings. And finally, Cannonball, the only two-player direct competition of the set, in which both players direct giant robotic ricks to fire Kirby's at each other. If you played Artillery Duel or Pocket Tanks, you should know the deal. There were also rumors that Megaton Punch and Samurai Kirby were also available in the toy box, and are pretty much identical to their appearance in Kirby Superstar, likely because the games themselves are mostly a way to promote the upcoming Kirby Super Deluxe, which came out in March of the same year. Every time you start the game, you get this splash screen that I can only describe as a pre-roll ad. Loosely translated, it seems to mean something like, you see this? You want this. Or possibly simply, crazy new game. But unfortunately, that's where the extent of my research ends. Kirby's Toy Box is yet another casualty to the transient nature of games from this time. I've scoured every corner of the internet, done way too much Japanese translation, and even asked the moderators of the Kirby Wiki for help. But I've only been able to play these three games, Baseball, Pinball, and Stardust. I would love to review all the games in this series, but this is one time where Google has completely failed me. The problem is, most people don't realize there's supposed to be a collection of 10 different games, each with their own individual ROMs. So they just see a file with the name Kirby no Omashabako on it, pop it on a download site as Kirby's Toy Box, and call it a day. But I'm almost certain ROMs of this game do exist, since all these screenshots I found must have been taken with an emulator. If anybody knows where I can get them, 
please send me a message. If you have connections at HAL, Nintendo, or even some obscure Japanese Satellaview site that collects random gaming ephemera and have access to these games, please get in touch with me. This is a part of Kirby history that is in danger of being forgotten forever.